Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, being in two bands is, or or having a main band and then a side band is is kind of um, it's a lot to deal with, especially when I'm doing work as a painter and also doing work um, on film and remixes on the side. It, my schedule is usually pretty heavy and uh, saturated with different projects. So, um, you know. The first Blacklight record came out in 2007, and then um, we had a DVD release and did a covers record, which came out in 2008, and then toured briefly in 2009, and then I was back into Limp Bizkit again, and for the last four years have been going very hard with Limp Bizkit recording and touring, so um, eventually it just came time, you know, the, the record had been made the second studio record had been made over the course of that period of time on and off. And it just finally, the time has come this year to where I can't stand to wait anymore. And I really want to release it. Um, and this fall it's, it's interesting, interestingly enough, um, that my two bands might actually come together and, and do a tour together. So it's going to, my, we're, we're putting together a Black Light Burns Limp Bizkit tour this year. So I'll be playing two sets uh, with a band in between to give me time to change. So I'm pretty excited about that. I've always wanted to do it. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I'd, I'd already been a fan of Manson, so I think... Um, you know, being a fan of the band previously had already had an effect on my playing. And um, during the eight months that I was involved with Manson, I only played two shows and then spent a lot of time sitting around in a studio um, not writing. So it, it um, you know, didn't have that much of an effect on my playing. It, uh, he's definitely one of my favorite people. And he, he had an effect on my... Um, on me personally and I'm glad to you know call him a friend now but but uh, as far as a lot of writing and playing together it wasn't really happening it's I mean I really think it's two different things it's you know there it's two different characters two different sides of my personality it's it's two different um loves and uh, I, I would never want Blacklight to die, but Limp Bizkit is obviously my priority, you know, because Blacklight is a, you know, it's a pet project that, that doesn't really afford me a living, whereas Limp Bizkit is, you know, affords me to, to be able to play music. And being in Bizkit, I'm able to do Blacklight Burns. I don't know if I'd even be able to do it if I was, you know, had a career change and was working in a different job or something like that. So... Um, yeah, it's, it's lovely to be able to do both. And I think they're really apples and oranges as far as com comparable comparing because the levels are so vastly different. Um, what's cool is I have a lot of artistic freedom in Limp Bizkit as far as like being able to paint myself and writing the music and, um, you know, working with these guys that are, that I'm, have, have a very good, um, good collaboration level with to where, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of like many brains becoming one in, in Limp Bizkit and, and, uh, it's a different kind of creative process where, in Blacklight, I'm completely alone and I'm sort of cooped up and on this journey, creative journey myself. And whatever I think of is, is what it is. Whatever I can come up with is what it is. And I don't have anyone else to work with. So it's sometimes a lonely process and some, and you know, it, it just, it takes a lot longer to manifest, you know, all the creative, the creative side of Blacklight. I think visually, I'm, I'm more creative with Limp Bizkit and Blacklight. It's like more toned down for some reason. I, I don't know. I think it's because we have to haul gear ourselves and I don't have time to get all made up to look crazy on stage. So it's just a very quick process. You know, when we go out, the last tour we did was in a van and trailer and I drove and we did, we went out and set our gear up on stage in front of the audience and 
you know, went out and sold merch and I, I just have a lot more jobs. So visually it's a little bit more like, like, okay, do I have time to do this? Okay, great. Let's go on the stage, you know? The new album started actually the, the, I started writing immediately after completing Cruel Melody and, um, started writing, started recording in 2008, actually. And I've just done little bits of recording over, over the last four years. Um, and, uh, the intention was like a, a lot of the criti criticism of the first record was it was too industrial and parts of it sounded too much like nine inch nails or, or, you know, bands of that ilk. And, um, my intention for this one was to really grow out of that into our own, more of our own sound and the sound that I've, that I had some tracks like, like Mesopotamia and, um, one of yours and some of the songs off the first record that were less industrial and more kind of wild rock, um, with a little bit of humor in it. And, uh, I was gravitating more towards those tracks and those tracks seemed to work better live. Uh, so I wanted to, the second record to be all the elements that I liked of cruel melody without the things that sounded, um, like another band or sounded not like myself. So there was sort of this pre writing editing process where I went, I'm not going to do all these things that I did on the first record. Um, and I'm really going to push into these areas, you know, that, that sound wilder and, you know, not, and try to make mistakes, try to not make everything perfect and um, try to keep a lot of mistakes. We also recorded a lot of the drums to tape this time instead of directly into a digital format. And that was really interesting to, to work in that situation, to actually be working with tape and cutting tape um, and playing with the tape machine and the warmth it had. And it was, it was a cool process doing that. So, um, yeah, it's a much more organic record, although it still sounds like the same band, I think. Yeah, I think it's more, I think it's a rock record, you know, there, there are some songs that are more ethereal and dynamic and, and have, you know, a softer, softer element to them. But I think, you know, the record, even though it's a different album than Cruel Melody, it still has the same kind of pattern where, where it starts really hard and then gets kind of strange and then ends with a sort of a, a wisp of of disintegrating mist you know it like it just kind of ends um very softly and like like somebody falling into water and drowning or something and it's just over so it's big weird soft kind of like cruel melody was Um, a lot of it stems from the places that Cruel Melody kind of left off. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's about, you know, people and situations and, um, different and sort of the aftermath of Cruel Melody in many ways. Um, you know, I was going through a really bad time on that first record in my love life and went through a lot of changes and a divorce and had all kinds of you know, you know, a split with, with Limp Biscuit was happening at that time too. And, um, the moment you realize is, is sort of the aftermath of all that coming together and still afterthoughts and feelings about that part of my life, I guess. And most of the lyrics were written three or four years ago. So it was still sort of fresh. Um, and, uh, yeah, but it's mostly about like, lost love and miss opportunities and, um, you know, do letting yourself go to the, your crazy side and, you know, um, fighting the, you know, demons and the things that are always trying to eat up your good side. 
I guess. And uh, yeah, so that I, I think the underlying theme is still the same, but um, a little wilder on this record.